Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create those control joints that we made when we did the spine tutorial. So the ribbon spine. So what I'm going to do is select the start, mid and end joints. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier is if we pick an odd number of joints, so we re rebuilt this with nine spans, so we've got nine joints. Uh, this basically means that there's going to be a middle joint so it's going to have even joints on either side of that middle joint and if you're using free um, control, so start, mid and end control that usually works out better because you've got that joint in the middle whereas if it was an even number that control would be in the middle of two joints so really that control would be rotating those two joints so with this it's, it just works out a lot better so I'm going to select the start, mid and end on each side hit control D to duplicate hit shift P to unparent and with them still selected I'm going to put the radius to 1.5 just to make them a lot easier to see and I'm going to expand each one of these joints because we duplicated it it's got that um, constraint duplicated with it so I'm just going to hit delete to get rid of them and again if I just check the local rotative axes because these were parented to the follicles you can see that they're actually aligned with this nerve surface so much like with the arm controls we've got them to align with the joints what we can now do is get the control curves to align with these joints so the actual animation controls align with this spine which will give for better twisting so better rotations of these so and another reason the reason I put this radius up to 1.5 is because it just it becomes visually more clear so these joints are the parents these are the drivers and these are going to move what's ever inside them so I see it as, as if this joints like me sat inside a car so it's sat inside this joint so wherever this joints go gonna go the joint inside it's gonna follow along okay so what we can do now is I'm just gonna rename these JT capital DRV for driver because that's, that's what these are going to be um, antenna ribbon start so actually I'm going to remove the ribbon and rename this start because this is the start joint 01 I'm going to copy the name paste it to the left hand side paste it again for the right but rename this uh, mid do the same for the left hand side and then finally end so we, we can just tell what these are and what we're going to do now is add the control curves so if we go to the button to the bottom right hand corner which is the script editor or windows general editors and script editor we kept the code for creating that tube curve that we made for the arms so you can either create the tube curve again or if you've got the code or if you can't find the code we're going to have a link in the description to a dropbox link for this code so you can always get it through there and I'm just going to select this and hit the execute which is this blue play icon at the top, this arrow and I'll close the script editor and that's created that tube curve for us so I'm holding V, I'm going to vert snap this to the first joint I'm just going to, just going to scale this down a bit and I'm going to duplicate it and snap it to each and what I'm actually going to do is delete the left hand, the right hand side. Actually, then we'll do the same. We'll do it to one side and then flip it over. So what we were saying earlier, these joints match the orientation of this nerve surface. So it would be ideal if we match the rotation again. So what I'm going to do is hit Control G on each one of these. And actually, I'm not going to do it with the last one. So I'm going to hit Shift P so I'm not going to group the last one because I do want that to be level because that's where it meets the eye and I want the, the eye has been modelled uh, level so I want to keep that level and 
then what we're going to do on both these joints is to center the pivots. So with the first joint selected, I'm going to shift select the joint, hit P to parent, and then this group, I'm going to reset its transforms. So not the translates, just the rotates. It's going to rotate into position. Get the next group, parent to the joint, with the group still selected, zero out the rotations. And then with these two groups, I'm going to hit Shift P to unparent. So we'll get them into place. And I'm actually just going to go freeze, right click, freeze, and translate. So I'm just going to freeze the translates, but not the rotates. So again, just right click, freeze, translates. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and start renaming these. So the first one, CC underscore left underscore antenna. Start R1. This will be the mid, and this will be the end. And again, just copying these and replacing the CC with GRP underscore rot off for rotate offset. So we've got all those groups there. And before we mirror it over, I'm going to just show the mesh and reference it. And I'm going to go ahead and reshape these. So I'm going to mask, click everything uh, just so we can select curves. And just start reshaping this to match. I'll show the wireframe so I can start match this to this character. down a bit actually. And again it's just so the animator can visually see quite easily what they're going to be controlling. So this middle bit is going to probably be this bulk of the antenna and then this is going to be all the way down to the bottom so we can just easily see what's going on there. Okay so I'm going to switch all the selections back on and with all them shaped, I can just select them all, hit Control D, Control G to group them, put a minus one in the X to flip it over, and then I'll just hit Shift P to unparent them, delete that group that we used just to flip it over, and with the ones we flipped, just delete the history and freeze transformations again. And actually, we don't want to. So I'll just undo that before we froze. Because remember, we don't want to freeze transforms on these rotate offset groups. So all I'm going to do is freeze the scale of these. And then just check all the curves. So I'll free these curves, apart from this top one up here. But again, the top one, we're not going to be we didn't rotate this into position so it's okay to freeze transforms on everything on that object and with these other two curves I'm going to go right click freeze scale so just double checking all these making sure holding down E left clicking so we're in local you can see the pivots are rotating along with this aiming down this spine there's no rotates in the channel box which is what we want and then I'm just going to move to the front and we can see here that actually these have been flipped round in the front because we've flipped that so you can see that the X the Z axis even is pointing the wrong way and this is bad because if we selected all these controls and wanted to animate them you can see moving in the X, uh, Z, Z it's going to give us different results on the control, so we can't move that control all as one. So what I'm actually going to do is just flip these round. 
hit a minus one, and then we're going to freeze the scales again. And that might not work because actually what we need to do is do it on the rotate offset groups. So because we flip these round in Y, what we're actually going to just do is flip these over. So we'll select these two groups. We'll change that rotation and it back to zero, which is going to get the control in the right direction. So we've got the Z pit pointing forward. But what we need to do now is just put a negative Z in the X and Z scales. So we can get those controls visually matching up again. We can check in all the axes. You can see these these are lining up again. And in the front view they're lining up. And then we can just freeze the scales on this, these two groups. Okay, so that's working now. So we just set the rotate y back to zero. For us put a negative one in the x and z to get the Z facing forward and to get these facing the right way to match with the opposite side. Okay, so now all we need to do is parent constrain these up. So I'm just going to collapse these groups and select all these groups actually and start putting them in their correct groups up here. So the correct character node groups. So with all the curves and the group nodes for the rotate offsets. I'm just going to middle mouse click and drag to control objects and then I'm going to take all these DRV joints and put them under joints in DRV so DRV for driver. So driver just means they're driving the rig they're not going to be skinned to the final character mesh so they're skinned to this ribbon curve but not the final character mesh and what we can do now is select each control, shift select the joint, and then go to animation, constraint, parent, and go to the option box. And I'm going to reset settings and just to make sure we've got maintain offset checked on and hit apply. And I'm going to do the same for the rest, selecting them and hit G, so driver, select the driven, which is the joint, hit G. Just do the same for all these. So now we've got these joints moving along with the controls, but they're not doing anything to the spine. The spine's staying behind. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to select these three joints, shift select the nerve surface, and we're just going to go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind go to the option box and that's make sure you're under animation for that. So I'm going to go into more detail about these options when we start skinning the character. So I'm just going to briefly go over these. So the, the first option is bind to. We want to bind to the selected joints. Joint hierarchy is for example if we selected the wrist. Joint hierarchy means it's going to select it's going to bind with all the joints inside that hierarchy. So selecting the wrist and it's going to bind with all the finger joints. But because we just want these ones we've got selected, I'm just going to hit selected joints. Bind method closest distance, so it's just going to calculate the distance from this joint to these CVs. The skinning method. Classic linear is the normal skinning, you know, you get the skin weights, these CVs have an influence between those two joints or several other joints, and it's going to weight them up to dictate where it's going to move. Um, the next one is dual quaternion which deals with better twisting so for this rig we actually do want some better twisting because this antenna has got quite a few joints in it, it's going to be cartoony it's going to be a bit of twisting in there but what we're actually going to do is weight blended which is both of these above so we've still got the classic linear and the weight blended to work with I mean dual quaternion even. Uh, the next one is max influence we've got this set to three because there's only three joints here and this basically means 
these CVs can only be influenced by free joints and by default max maintain max influence is ticked on which is good for if you're using it for game engines because they do want a max influence on, on the skinning but we can uncheck this so later on if I do add more joints and I do want a CV or Vertsy to be influenced by more than three joints I can increase that as I want and drop off rate is how fast it's going to drop off in my units so four would be to about here so I'm going to drop this to about two so it drops off quite quickly and just hit apply and now we can see moving these about we can now see that it's going to influence the ribbon spine you can see down here we're getting a bit of an error like moving this is it's having less influence than it's having a bit more so we could try different drop off settings but I'm just going to go in and leave it as it is for now I'm going to do the same on the other side select the free joints shift select the nerve surface hit apply and we can see it's going to lock the nerve surface so these nerve surfaces are locked and we've got that skin cluster in there so we've got some really good results there. that's looking really good already we can already imagine how with this character moving these about is going to influence that mesh and don't get too worried when we start moving these and you can see here the nerve surface becomes really thin because it doesn't really actually matter how thick or thin this nerve surface becomes it's just the the joints we're worried about so I'm going to reset these back to zero and what we can actually do is it's like this error here where we move it out and it's editing it's got influence on this bottom joint here if you select the mesh and just go to skin edit smooth skin and we go to the paint skin weights tool paint skin weights tool here we've got the options on this and it's like oops any other skinning we can paint and subtract the influence and we're going to go into this a lot more when we start skinning painting skin weights on the, the main character this character's skin so don't, don't be worried if we're not going over all the options in here but basically what we can do is we can select the brush and this top joint here and we can see the influence of these various different joints and with this moved off to the side I can start to use a replacement and replace it with a value of zero I can start to just increase the brush size and start to paint it down here so I'm removing the influence of that top joint right at the bottom which is what we want I don't want this top control to control the bottom I can do the same the middle control I don't want to have influence on the bottom I don't want it to have influence on the top so you can see that was moving back a little bit so I want those the top and bottoms to be fully anchored to those controls and then the end again I'm just going to remove any influence it's got at the top and we can hold shift if we, want, if we want we can see the icon, the brush goes from R, which is replace which is the mode we've got at the moment to SM for smooth or we can check smooth in here so we could just smooth these as well Oops. probably don't want as much influence over there so smooth it like that okay so that's just a quick look how we can get the ribbon spine working with the different controls so now we've got those ribbon spines working we're going to start working on the rest of the rig and this is basically the same way that we're going to do the spine for the main character's body and once you get in the method of working with these they become relatively simple so at the start it might seem daunting that you're creating these nerve surfaces you're creating hair follicles on it and adding joints to it and it might seem as if it's going to be more complicated but overall it actually is quite easy to set up once you've done it a few times and definitely when you start animating with these or skinning with them you're going to see the advantages of that